Welcome to Our Girl Relationships. We talk about the problems people face in their day-to-day -day lives. Let's start with the video. You guys can probably tell by the title that me and my stepmom, Jane, have almost never had a good relationship. All my life, ever since my dad and she got together, she's done everything in her power to make my life miserable. And my dad just sat and watched it all unfold because she has him wrapped around her finger tightly. But well, my dad's inability to side with me is another story and will most likely take up an entire other post. So for now, I'll just stick to my stepmom. So as I said, ever since I was a kid, my stepmom made me do a shit ton of household chores, from cooking to cleaning to everything in between. And whenever I tried to protest, she'd manipulate me by telling me that this was all normal and that all the kids in every household were made to do a tremendous amount of household chores. Obviously, that was a complete lie, and I realized that as I watched my step-siblings grow old and do absolutely nothing around the house, my anger went through the roof, and I made sure to tell everyone who would listen about it. And after a lot of threats and rage-filled texts from my extended family, Jane decided to reduce the amount of work I had. But of course, that doesn't mean I didn't do anything. I still had a lot of work around the house, and if I ever missed doing them, the outcome was being grounded. You all can imagine this led to me becoming a very angsty teen, and Jane did not like that. The more I would rebel, the more she would try to push me to the edge. This situation wasn't any different, but the outcome of it was indeed different and something that's making me question myself. It all began a couple of days back when, as yet another one of my rebellious acts, I decided to refuse to pack Jane her lunch. There's a backstory to that, and it's just that I was exhausted to the max, waking up every day, packing meals for five people, going to school, working, and then getting home with a ton of assignments and chores to do. I needed a break. I really did. And the moment I asked for it, Jane's immediate response was no, because apparently her life is way harder than mine. Of course, it is, Jane. We got into this small argument where I practically begged her to let me sleep in. She refused every single time. I knew I was coming to my wit's end, and so I came up with my first plan. I decided to not make lunch for her at all and tried to sleep in. Jane could not handle that at all. She was so mad. I tell you guys, she threw this huge tantrum and decided to not go to work that day at all to teach me a lesson. I got yelled at by everyone in the house, my siblings and my dad, because apparently I deserved it because I was the reason behind my stepmom's bitter mood. It was at that moment I knew I had enough. This is when I came up with my second plan. I know this was very extra and honestly unnecessary, but still, I knew I had that rage inside of me and knew I needed somewhere to release it. So I decided to go ahead with it and I put it to work the very next day Jane woke up and thought to herself that berating me was enough and that she'd have her lunchbox ready. Well, she was right. She did have her lunchbox ready the next day, but it was just the lunchbox with nothing except a note inside of it that said, find a new housemaid. I wrote that note in the best handwriting I possibly could and tucked it inside Jane's bag. Yes, I had to put it inside her bag. And I just waited and waited and waited for her to blow up. Well, Needless to say, she did. She was so angry that she returned home way earlier than she should have. We got into a screaming match where everybody took her side. I knew it was at that moment that I realized I really wasn't mentally stable enough and anymore to deal with these people. I think I should say I wasn't mentally unstable enough to have it in me to deal with these people. I just packed my things and drove to my grandparents' place. 
It's been a couple of days since I have been living here, and Jane and my dad have tried numerous times already to contact me. And honestly, I know it's not because they're concerned for me. I know it's all because they want their living maid back in their house. I am really done tolerating all this, but at the same time, I'm finding myself questioning if I'm really the a-hole for doing everything that I did. From most of the people I asked, everyone is split. Some people say I'm the a-hole for overreacting, and some say I'm completely in the right. Honestly, at this point, I absolutely have no idea. A-I-T-A? A lot of you guys were asking me about my mom and where she was when all of this was going down, and well, I hope this update explains it to you guys. My parents met when they were very young, and my mom got pregnant with me when she was around 16. Unfortunately, she had no means to get an abortion or such, uh, so she ended up having to give birth to me and get married to my dad when she was 18. Their marriage was a mess from the very beginning because they were very different people. They couldn't get divorced because my dad and mom both were being supported by their parents. My dad was a horrible person to her. He'd berate her, hurt her, and just be overall toxic to her in the worst ways possible because apparently she was the reason why he was stuck with me. My dad soon got a job at my grandfather's company and that got his ego even more inflated. He now had money in his hand and thought he could do anything he wanted. My mom started to come to one of her lowest phases and unfortunately, just a couple of months after, she ran away with all of her belongings and money, leaving nothing but a letter behind confirming that she was leaving because she couldn't see my dad being so terrible and cheating on her. She talked about leaving so she could erase her past and start a whole new life. My dad immediately got his affair partner, i.e. Jane, pregnant soon after, and it didn't take her long to wrap him around her finger. The dad I knew to not mess with me too much became the dad who I realized was absolutely toxic and abusive. Looking at him made me realize how truly it wasn't my mom's fault for leaving. Well, that's how life became for me, a living hell. Honestly, but it feels good to be with my grandparents. My grandpa is a really kind man who's always been by my side. So the fact that I'm so much closer to him now feels really good and makes me feel really lucky that I'm around these people. I guess Jane's need for a maid went through the roof today because she and my dad really showed up at my grandparents' place and began demanding that they return me to them. My grandpa was truly a champ because he didn't let my dad have it at all. He immediately shut him down and exploded on him and Jane, both of who couldn't say anything in return because there's so much that my grandpa has done for them. It's almost like He's forever indebted to him. They stood there quietly as I laughed at how my grandpa chewed them out a new one. All the protests by my dad and Jane, every attempt they made to try to make it seem like I was lying at any point, was met with my grandpa immediately letting them know that with everything that my dad had done, he'd never in a million years believe him. They had this huge discussion. It was mostly my grandpa speaking, but my dad tried to protest here and there, especially when Jane would glare at him, lol. It all ended with my grandpa telling my dad that he was fired from his job because he wasn't going to let someone as evil as him work for him. Telling you guys that I teared up was an understatement because this truly was a huge deal. Not just for me, but my grandpa too. The company that he owns is a huge deal and requires a highly experienced and skilled worker, which my dad was. So firing him means that he'd now have to find a completely different and new person to work for him and look after the company once he passes. This decision of my grandpa's was just as shocking to my dad as it was for me. Jane literally teared up because she knew her life was now in shambles. She really tried doing a 360 degree after that, but it was of no avail. And my grandpa just 
just kicked him out. This entire situation was really overwhelming for me. Even though it was obvious that something like this was to happen, I never figured it'd be as bad as it all turned out to be. Thankfully, though, the fact that I'm as blessed as I am, alongside my grandparents, I have a lot of people I can lean on for support. It's been a long time since I last posted. I really got caught up with school and other stuff. Well, I have finally cut off my dad and Jane completely and so have a lot of my relatives. They're suddenly crying wolf, telling everyone that they've changed and they realize their mistake. But you, I, and literally everyone knows that they're only doing all of this because they finally called out and have absolutely no one else to look after them after all these years of leaning on my grandpa for everything. I really hope this experience is eye-opening and humbling to them because, like many of you said, they really need it. I'm just glad that they're no longer in my life or in the lives of my loved ones. If that is not a blessing enough, the fact that I have gotten into my dream college and am going to fly a couple of states away with my friends soon is the biggest reminder to me that everything is okay and will only get better. I hope this post has served as a reminder to all of you as well. Thank you. NTA, Jane used you as free labor and just expected you to go along with it like anything. That just makes her look stupid. And honestly, the more I read the post, the more convinced I became that she indeed is stupid. This all isn't just Jane, though. Your dad, too, sounds like a very sad person, seeing just how much she has him wrapped around her finger that he legit ignores his child being abused is truly saddening. Really, I'm glad you could get out and live with your supportive grandparents. Never look back. NTA. What a typical narcissistic parent-child story. Jane was truly going through some power trip after getting the dad wrapped around her finger. It was refreshing when I saw that OP ended up getting out of the house and breaking the pattern of allowing Jane to mess with OP's mental health even more. It felt so good to read that OP is living the life they deserve. My sister, 28 female, has a learning disability that made it hard for her to hold down a job. And so she has lived with our parents for most of her life. My sister and parents had a lot of fights over the pandemic because she still wanted to go out and they wanted her to stay at home to avoid getting sick. So now she wants to move out and recently found a job. It doesn't pay well, but she wants to move out. Because she doesn't make a lot, she can't afford most places and has been stuck living at home with our mom, driving her to work every day. Then my friend said her basement suite was open at a good price to rent, and I jumped on asking for her to rent to my sister. My sister went to see the place, and she loved it. My friend wanted a background check and credit check, and my sister agreed to it. My sister didn't want me involved and wanted to handle it to prove she was independent. Okay, I step back and two weeks later she calls me and cries, saying my friend discriminated against her for her learning disability. I confront my friend and she defends herself by saying she asked for my sister's email and kept getting the wrong email. Apparently, my sister kept giving her the wrong email for a week before she got the right one. Then she said that my sister didn't fill out the forms and kept saying she was going to. My sister said she didn't know how to, but my friend said she never asked her. I told my friend she should have come to me, and she said I told her to discuss it with my sister, and she didn't say she didn't know how to fill it out, only that she would get to it. She said she gave her a week to fill it out and got sick of waiting and signed with someone else. I got angry with her, saying she should accommodate her disability better. She knows she has a disability. She got mad at me and pointed out that my sister should have told me or her that she didn't know how to fill out the form and that she wasn't going to baby her as I do. I got so mad and called her a bee and she hung up on me. 
YTA, your sister asked you not to get involved, but she wasn't capable of handling it herself. That is proof she is not ready to be living by herself without some kind of assistance. What is your friend to do when your sister needs to pay rent and can't set up the transfer or write a check? Just accept that she has to rent for free because your sister has a disability? I'm sorry, but that's not how the world works. Your sister wasn't discriminated against. She just failed to meet the minimum requirements of being able to rent, which is filling out the proper paperwork or asking help from someone who could fill it out with her. YTA, your friend didn't discriminate because of her disability. He rented to someone else because she didn't do the things required to rent a place, and instead of reaching out and getting help, she ignored it and hoped that other people would take care of it for her automatically. Use this as a teaching moment for her instead of attacking your friend. Also, tell your sister that this is not discrimination. She had a responsibility and failed to fulfill it. Her disability isn't the issue here, but she and you are using it as a crutch and cudgel. YTA. First of all, your friend was right to leave you out of the equation. You wouldn't be the one renting her property. Your sister would. She asked her to do some very basic tenant-related things and didn't get any response back. If I were a landlord, I wouldn't rent to that person either. Do you think your sister is truly capable of keeping up with rent, utility bills, grocery shopping, and cleaning on her own when she can't ask for help when she is overwhelmed by basic paperwork? Maybe check into some adult living classes for her that can help her with budgeting, paying bills on time, and such. Depending on her level of disability, she may even be eligible for a group home setting that will take care of some of those things for her. I hope your sister can find a situation that works for her and that you apologize for calling your very reasonable friend a bitch for having reasonable expectations. My mother-in-law was diagnosed with terminal cancer last year. We were told that it was very serious and that we should make the most of our remaining time with her. My husband and I live a 12 hours drive away from mother-in-law and father-in-law, and since the diagnosis, we have spent every vacation and holiday with them. We either fly or we have to drive as we can't find anyone to babysit our cats. In total, we have spent over a month and a half and thousands of dollars visiting them this year. While I know that it's important to support my husband as much as I can, I'm starting to spiral. We don't ever really get a relaxing break. We've not been able to save as much as we can, and I've started to feel depressed about the lack of control over my life right now. With the upcoming Christmas holidays, I discussed the idea of me visiting my parents, who I haven't seen in six months, while my husband visited his own. My husband was very upset and kept telling me that this could be his mom's last Christmas with us and that I was being selfish. He told me that his dad was looking forward to me being there and that it would seem like I don't want to spend time with them. I feel guilty that I am not being a supportive wife, but I also feel justified in wanting to see my own family and enjoying a relaxing holiday for the first time in over a year. AITA, edit for info. Thanks for all the responses. For clarification, the doctor asked if she wanted to know how long she had left. She didn't want to know and neither did father-in-law. We don't know if it's months or years. Unfortunately, compromising would be difficult for visiting both as our parents live on opposite ends of the country. NAH, I very much understand how your husband and his parents are feeling, but just because this is difficult for them right now doesn't mean it's not also difficult for you. Can you go see his parents and then have some time on your own? You sound burnt the hell out. You need a break. You've clearly put a lot of time and effort and funds into making the most of the time you have left with your mother-in-law. 
But you deserve to have time to look after your own mental and emotional health too. NTA, even if you had a lovely time and you weren't shelling out a ton of money, you would still be within reason to visit your family, especially once in six months. Anyone can die at any moment. Life is so fragile. It is important to spend time with those we care about while we can. Yes, your mother-in-law has been given a timeline, but you are allowed to enjoy your life with others too. I, for one, would never forgive myself or my husband if something did happen to my parents in the meantime, and he guilted me into not going. You, however, have seen his parents a ton lately, so nothing for you to regret there. NTA, I don't think your husband is a big a-hole, but I do think he is for making you feel guilty and not trying to understand how difficult things are for you. I get he's overwhelmed and dealing with grief that he will lose his mother, but I really think he's quite the a-hole for calling you selfish and guilting you so heavily. I think you need to take a step back. Breathe and figure out what boundaries you need to set so that you can remain physically and mentally healthy so that you can live life and support him through this trying time. Basically, you need to tell him that you're struggling, that it's hurtful that he can't or won't see it, that you're trying to be there for him and you're breaking under the pressure and you don't want to fall apart when he needs you the most that you need to refill your well, and visiting your parents is one way that you can do that. 